Hello there, everyone. In this module, we're going to learn about hypersensitivity. Inappropriate adaptive immune attacks cause reactions harmful to the body. These include autoimmune responses, in which the immune system turns against one of the body's own tissues, Immune complex diseases, which involve over-exuberant antibody responses that spill over and damage normal tissue. And allergies. An allergy is the acquisition of an inappropriate specific immune reactivity or hypersensitivity to a normally harmless environmental substance, such as dust or pollen. The offending agent is known as an allergen. Subsequent re-exposure of a sensitized individual to the same allergen elicits an immune attack, which may vary from a mild, annoying reaction to a severe, body-damaging reaction that may even be fatal. Allergic responses are classified into two categories, immediate hypersensitivity and delayed hypersensitivity. In immediate hypersensitivity, the allergic response appears within about 20 minutes after a sensitized person is exposed to an allergen. In delayed hypersensitivity, the reaction does not generally show up until a day or so following exposure. The difference in timing is the result of the different mediators involved. A particular allergen may activate either a B cell or a T cell response. Immediate allergic reactions involve B cells and are elicited by antibody reactions with an allergen. Delayed reactions involve T cells and the more slowly responding process of cell-mediated immunity against the allergen. Let's take a closer look at immediate hypersensitivity reactions. To start, let's talk about the triggers for immediate hypersensitivity. In immediate hypersensitivity, the antibodies are involved and the events that ensue on exposure to an allergen differ from the typical antibody-mediated response to bacteria. The most common allergens that provoke immediate hypersensitivities are pollen grains, bee stings, penicillin, certain foods, molds, dust, feathers, and animal fur. For unclear reasons, these allergens bind to and elicit the synthesis of immunoglobulin E antibodies rather than the immunoglobulin G antibodies associated with bacterial antigens. When a person with an allergic tendency is first exposed to a particular allergen, antigens are taken up by antigen-presenting cells which process them and display them as peptide MHC2 complex on their surface. These antigen-presenting cells migrate to the lymph node Compatible helper T cells secrete IL-4, a cytokine that prods compatible B cells to synthesize immunoglobulin E antibodies specific for the allergen. During this initial sensitization period, no symptoms are evoked, but memory cells form that are primed for a more powerful response on subsequent re-exposure to the same allergen. In contrast to the antibody-mediated response elicited by bacterial antigens, immunoglobulin E antibodies do not freely circulate. Instead, their tail portions attach to mast cells and basophils, both of which produce and store an arsenal of potent inflammatory chemicals such as histamine in preformed granules. Mast cells are most plentiful in regions that come into contact with the external environment, such as the skin, the outer surface of the eyes, the linings of the respiratory system, and the digestive tract. 
binding of an appropriate allergen with the outreached arm regions of the immunoglobulin E antibodies that are lodged tail first in a mast cell or basophil triggers the rupture of the cell's granules. As a result, histamine and other chemical mediators spew forth into the surrounding tissue. A single mast cell or basophil may be coated with a number of different immunoglobulin E antibodies, each able to bind with a different allergen. Thus, the mast cell can be triggered to release its chemical products by any one of a number of different allergens. Now for the chemical mediators of immediate hypersensitivity. These released chemicals cause the reactions that characterize immediate hypersensitivity. The following are among the most important chemicals released during immediate allergic reactions. Histamine, which brings about vasodilation and increased capillary permeability, as well as increased mucus production. Slow reactive substance of anaphylaxis, or SRSA, which induces prolonged and profound contraction of smooth muscle, especially of the small respiratory airways. SRSA is a collection of three related leukotrienes, locally acting mediators similar to prostaglandins. Eosinophil chemotactic factor, which specifically attracts eosinophils to the area. Interestingly, eosinophils release enzymes that inactivate SRSA and may also inhibit histamine, perhaps serving as an off switch to limit the allergic response. Now for the symptoms of immediate hypersensitivity. Symptoms of immediate hypersensitivity vary depending on the site, the allergen, and the mediators involved. Most frequently, the reaction is localized to the body site in which the immunoglobulin-bearing cells first come into contact with the allergen. If the reaction is limited to the upper respiratory passages after a person inhales an allergen, such as ragweed pollen, the released chemicals bring about the symptoms characteristic of hay fever. For example, nasal congestion caused by histamine-induced localized edema and sneezing and runny nose caused by increased mucus secretion. If the reaction is concentrated primarily within the bronchioles, which are the small respiratory airways that lead to the tiny air sacs within the lungs, asthma results. Contraction of the smooth muscle in the walls of the bronchioles in response to SRSA narrows or constricts these passageways, making breathing difficult. Localized swelling in the skin because of allergy-induced histamine release causes hives. An allergic reaction in the digestive tract in response to an ingested allergen can lead to diarrhea. Now we're going to talk about the treatment of immediate hypersensitivity. Treatment of localized immediate allergic reactions with antihistamines often offers only partial relief of the symptoms because some of the manifestations are invoked by other chemical mediators not blocked by these drugs. For example, Antihistamines are not particularly effective in treating asthma, the most serious symptoms of which are invoked by SRSA. Adrenergic drugs, which mimic the sympathetic nervous system, are helpful through their vasoconstrictor bronchodilator actions in counteracting the effects of both histamine and SRSA. Anti-inflammatory drugs, such as cortisol derivatives, are often used as the primary treatment for ongoing allergen-induced inflammation, such as that associated with asthma. Newer drugs such as Singular that inhibit leukotrienes, including SRSA, have been added to the arsenal for combating immediate allergies. The last thing we'll talk about with immediate hypersensitivity is its relationship with parasitic infection. Although the immediate hypersensitivity response differs considerably from the typical immunoglobulin G antibody response to bacterial infections, it is strikingly similar to the immune response elicited by parasitic worms. Shared characteristics of the immune reactions to allergens and parasitic worms include the production of immunoglobulin E antibodies 
and increased basophil and eosinophil activity. This finding has led to the proposal that harmless allergens somehow trigger an immune response designed to fight worms. Parasitic worms can penetrate the skin or digestive tract or can attach to the digestive tract lining. Some worms migrate through the lungs during a part of their life cycle. Scientists suspect the immunoglobulin E response helps ward off these invaders as follows. The inflammatory response in the skin could wall off parasitic worms attempting to burrow in. Coughing and sneezing could expel worms that migrated to the lungs. Diarrhea could help flush out worms before they could penetrate or attach to the digestive tract lining.